2019. And I'm gonna make sure I see everybody's pretty face there, so thank you. Um, I wanna pull up now one of our partners, which is the, um, our wonderful Rick Veranda from the Brooklyn Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Bienvenido a todos a la herencia de hispanidad. How big is that? Big time. Welcome to Hispanic Heritage Celebration, and I thank you for being here. A lot of members, I see partners. Thank you uh, to our sponsors, honorees. Congratulations. Uh, also, a good friend, our district attorney is here, so thank you, this DA. Want to announce my vice president, Juan Carlos Pocasangre, our senior board member, um, uh, Alex Paz, who are our senior executive staff. Uh, Mr. Borough President, it's once again a pleasure for me to do this, you know it. <laughs> and to do it in the people's house is even bigger. 21 Latino countries salute you today. I'm happy to represent them, but we salute you. <laughs> As usual, it's always my pleasure to introduce the Entrepreneur of the Year in Brooklyn. <gasps> what a big thing. What a big thing. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. In, in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I said three sentences. It's two pages. Two pages. No, 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 no. <laughs> three sentences. It's the highlight. It's the highlight, Denise. The abridged version, Denise. <laughs> you gotta love her. Give her a round of applause. She's trying to keep us on schedule, but nobody keeps me on schedule. So, uh, our Entrepreneur of the Year, Madeline Beers Business Kinder Dance and Kids Dance Sports LLC, have brought dance, sports, gymnastics, and fist fitness programs to thousands of children in the Brooklyn area for over 15 years. With a proven track record for bringing high quality dance and sports instructional programs to children, Madeline credits dance and martial arts with playing a significant role in her life. In 2004, she won the Kinder Dance Franchisee of the Year Award and is now serving Mr. Barrow President over 5,000 children in the Brooklyn area. It is my biggest pleasure, oh my God, my biggest pleasure to introduce you to the Brooklyn Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and I end. Brooklyn Borough President, Entrepreneur of the Year, Madeline Vera. I feel like coming out in that picture right now, photobombing you. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Right We're gonna do a group right picture with them real quickly. Right oh wait, look, the one you said, look, give me the paper.
just have many events, uh, but this was very important for for us to celebrate the beauty and diversity of this borough, and today acknowledging the rich spirit and energy of the Hispanic community is important. And my comments are extremely brief as the majority lead is walking in. Yeah. We want to thank her, give it up for Lori Cumbo. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, let me, let me just give you a brief a thought uh, that has really uh, resonated in this borough as this borough uh, continues to evolve. And I say over and over again, many of us were waking up to gunshots and not alarm clocks, but we stayed. We were here before Starbucks, and we're going to be here long after Starbucks. But we often, when I was a child, uh, D.A. Gonzalez, I was the guy on the corner playing three-card Marty. This is because before I became a cop. <laughs> and the goal was to dupe you. The goal was to use a sleight of hand to have you not focus on the real issue. And we often hear this term gentrification. And the first thing that comes to your mind is housing. But we are experiencing more than gentrification, gentrification of a home. We're seeing the gentrification of communication. The issues that are important to us, they have been gentrified. No one is focusing on our issues. When you have issues that are impactful to our community, they do not become relevant. And I've been talking about this for the last few days, and I really need for you to understand it because there's nothing more of a Shakespearean tragedy than when people mourn louder for others than they do for themselves. And we have started to relegate our communities to a place of insignificance. When we had a drug crisis and crack was rampant in our community, it was an incident. When drugs spilled over into the suburban counties, it became a crisis. When nine millimeter bullets were carving highways of death in our community, not only traumatizing the bodies that it struck, but ripping apart the anatomies of our community, it was just an incident. When it spilled over into the suburban schools, which is wrong, but the reality is it became a crisis and federal lawmakers engaged in the conversation of changing laws.